Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for July 9th, 21. All right, so good to see everybody on here this morning. And we'll go ahead and start by taking the Trinity breath to go on the heart space. So it's just putting your attention onto your physical heart, finding your light, taking that deep breath in from the earth, breathing in that light of the earth into the heart. And the breath is so important in the things we do. The second breath is imagining connecting to the heart of creation, source, soul, creator, God. Breathing in that light into the heart. And the third breath, breathing in both earth and sky, bring both energies together within you. And just let them flow as a column of light, grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right, so... Good morning, everybody. Um, everybody is welcome to drop questions in down here on the questions tab if you are here live today. And otherwise, we will start off with some questions here from the internet. Um, let's see. So John's asking about the the Hedekas that he's... Um, well, he's just stating in an email that he's been making the headicas, giving them to people. Um, you know, so basically for for people to put their intentions out in the world for working with water, for because I mean the water is going to the water can clear the water, raises frequency and vibration. Um, the water brings all kinds of wonderful healing, clearing, releasing things with it. Um, the water in nature, the water we drink. But um, so John's just asking people to step into a space with him and the elementals and to just do the cleaning and clearing of, of the environment, you know, of anything that's in the air, the grasshopper plagues that are coming, all the fun stuff of just, you know, holding the space to shift everything. And, and that's pretty fantastic. I, like I said, don't get too much into the mass meditation thing unless everybody everybody is on the same page and they're just holding space and not trying to be mental creators and doers because then it just kind of messes up the whole field so i like to get a good cohesive field when we're going to do a group project and we all surrender to that field and that's where you know for for group projects that's where i like to go john so um so I'm not going to lead anything here this morning for, for a group project. Um, we do have another question here. This question um, from Lauren. Let's see. Uh, and Lauren was wanting me to speak about the horse harmonizer ring. So the horse harmonizer ring that we have, it is the exact same as the Divine I Am ring from the Alchemist set, the practitioner size Alchemist set. Now, the practitioner size alchemist set, um, Divine I Am ring that we use for the horse harmonizer, if you were going to get one ring out of there, that's that's the one that I would suggest. And that's the same with our new um, personal alchemist set. And the, all three rings are phenomenal, but the smallest ring, the Divine I Am, is definitely a phenomenal ring. So that's the same with the horse harmonizer. Basically, with the horse harmonizer ring, we've worked with people over the years that um, work with rescue horses and, you know, Reiki masters, things like that. And they see that when the horses come in that have been abused, they have a spiky energy signature to them. Um, basically, you take that horse harmonizer ring and horses have the largest heart chakra out of any land critter. So you take the horse harmonizer ring, you slip it over their head, it lays over their heart um you know just while they're feeding uh so it could be there for like five minutes and then the trainers note that the horses their energy signature smooths out 
what we're seeing is is that it's taken the emotional charge out of the memories and simply put that's what it's doing for humans too is it is clearing those emotional charges but it's doing a lot more than that um you know but but yeah it's totally clearing traumas all all, all the stuff um so using the horse harmonizer ring like i say um you they're they're the same ring as the divine i am ring the horse harmonizer is um, let's see and then a question on the t-shirts that we put out um so we had that sale of the last few of the key pendant t-shirts we had so here at twistedsage.press it's here in the same building as our studio here um as our film studio we really were, were we we've had so many projects going on that we haven't been able to get here for the t-shirts for about a year and so we're going to get the t-shirts up and running again uh, basically we use crystal infused ink when we made like the key pendant t-shirt the energetics of the key pendant does come through in that shirt one because it's the crystal infused ink that helps to anchor it two because of uh just the the geometry that it is and and three because of the photo because even on the Twisted Sage website or on our flyers, um, you know, we anchor in the energetic tools into the photos. So that's why when you go on online and you go to the website that I, you know, tell a lot of people just to look at the picture, don't look at the names, descriptions, and find what you are drawn to um, because the energetics does come through the photos so that's the same with on the t-shirt um you know we've had quite a bit of feedback from those key pendant shirts of you know of people noting the the work that goes on with with wearing that shirt so we do plan on creating a line of shirts here at some time um, like say we have the presses ready and we have the crystal infused ink and all the good stuff so soon we'll get more t-shirts come in and uh yes they will carry the frequency of the tools on the shirt uh, let's see then another question can you discern which rings you are looking at by the size of the twist in each ring if possible i'd like to be able to identify the rings by shape instead of name and diameter size um you know, and that's kind of a tough one, too, because through the years, we've created so many different rings and so many of them have a similar twist and gauge and size. And that's it pretty much um, anymore. If it's rings throughout the past 11 years, I have to, you know, actually compare the rings side by side. If it was rings from just like maybe the past one year, um, we could probably narrow down what exact ring that you have. But um, we've we've created <laughs> such a huge variety of tools that it's hard to say based on the exact, you know, based on a picture of what the tool is. Um, a lot of times we'll maybe need that in comparison to something that we know. Um, so let's see, that is the questions that we have from the internet. So we're going to jump over here to the questions tab. Uh, let's see, Christine, can I ask why the divine I am ring is called the horse harmonizer? Oh, and then I answered it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just because, um, we we're going to, it's just for marketing basically because, um, you know, not every cowboy wants a divine I am ring they would much rather have a horse harmonizer ring and plus we're going to be creating we are in the process of creating Dakota Sage which is just a less woo woo of a website where we're going to be putting um, you know a lot of our more popular tools but maybe not with the same name and definitely not the same description um, for those who are looking for these tools but don't want all of the connotations of the new agey stuff that comes with those and what they're truly doing but um you know people could still get the tools and work with themselves and their animals and their plants and their water and their medications and everything 
without going down any of the other rabbit holes that you know we go down here at twisted sage so anyway we we will be brand rebranding a few tools when we have this new website up and going um let's see jr can you use the nine inch harmonizer ring and put it perpendicular to the to the bed one inch away to harmonize the heart area for two people while sleeping okay jr i want to try to get your question here you can use the nine inch harmonizer ring which is this ring right here and put it perpendicular to the bed one foot away to harmonize the heart area for two people while sleeping so basically here's here's a um, here's a trick that you can do with the with the rings um, where they're creating a column of light and you want to expand that light out to where two people can be within this column while you're sleeping a phenomenal way to do this is with quartz you can use a quartz crystal you know clear quartz if you just want to keep it clean clear or else you can add you know rose quartz whatever but if you put a larger piece of quartz crystal or you know a few of them that extend outside of the ring you just lay some quartz crystals like this like three or four or put one larger one in here it will disperse the energy of the ring it will make it disperse out into you know more of a of a funnel let's say more you know just dispersed out and not in a column so if you that's a great way so jr is asking about using the nine inch harmonizer ring for both people while they're sleeping and what i would do is i would slip it underneath the bed and um you're talking about the harmonize the heart area to use a piece of rose quartz and when you put that piece of crystal that rose quartz or whatever quartz inside of the ring and you're having the intention also that it is spreading out working with the heart everything when you put that piece of quartz in there and you have that intention it's amazing what can happen and yes the tools can shift the way that they project not just a column but because your intention using the quartz you can bring that energy up for both of you uh, let's see Pam, I'm traveling and lost one of my three quantum grid points for my baggage. Can I still use the two quantum grid points and use an intent for where I would have had positioned the third one? Um, so you can still use the two grid points to create, um, you know, a, a larger area field. You know, you just have one grid point over here, one over here. They will create that just that column about 13 14 inches wide that goes between them um this little column of light well it's more like a wall this grid of light that comes through so you'll still have um you know a, a little bit of a three-dimensional space and i'm trying to i'm trying to look into that too pam um because when you're using the grid points, you can certainly run off of other points that are out there. That's all taking place anyway, that the grid points are connecting to all, all of the ascension pyramids, all of the grid points. Um, so there's quite the web. But for your personal ones, um, yeah, you know, Pam, I totally feel you can use that third one just with your intention being in the heart space that you have that third one, you have the two, so you can put your two grid points here, knowing that it's connecting to your third one someplace in space, and then that's creating your triangulation pattern. Um, yeah, I totally feel that you can do that because it's just basically creating that third triangular triangulation point to create that more of a, of a three-dimensional space. Um, so yeah, I feel like you can just connect to that third one and add that to your mix. Uh, Susan, does the Wi-Fi ring transform the EMF energies into beneficial energy, or just does it, or does it just neutralize it? Um, so actually, Susan, when the when somebody's using a Wi-Fi ring, um, we've shown that professional dowsers who go out and they'll use uh, the dowsing scale to find out in the positives or negatives of how much something is beneficial or non-beneficial. 
So when we had a professional dowser going out and dowsing like the green transformer box in a neighborhood and the home electrical box while it was in a business, the electrical box in the, in the, in the business, they were um, negative thousands and negative hundreds, negative thousands on the transformer, negative hundreds on the um, electrical box. And then they used a Wi-Fi ring. Actually, they used the, the disc, same as Wi-Fi ring. Um, they used that on the transformer box and changed the transformer box to positive hundreds and the and the home electrical box changed to positive hundreds. So on a dowsing scale, it does change it to a positive. What we see, so like let's say for instance with our cell phones. So man-made electrical um, devices create a discordant, a discoherent energy. It's chaotic. It, um, it disrupts the electromagnetic energy field of a person. Um, every cell is electromagnetic energy field. Your heart is a giant six foot electromagnetic torus field. Um, so it's those discoherent energies that come in and disrupt our coherent energies. So instead of um, really looking at EMF as good or bad, we look at EMF as coherent and discoherent. So when it's discoherent without a cell phone tab, it's disrupting. When we put the cell phone tab on, it brings a coherency to this field, just like the Wi-Fi ring will bring a coherency to your electrical panel. And then the electromagnetic field is actually beneficial. I sleep with my phone by me at night. We've done the biofeedback studies showing that it aligns chakras, energy bodies, it clears the mental and emotional field. It makes organs function better. So when we harmonize electromagnetic fields and we are near them, it can actually be a beneficial thing to us as well, especially if we're a little discoherent and we come into these coherent fields, it can bring us into more coherency. Um, so let's see. And going back over to the chat tab. All right. Well, this seems like we got a few people on here this morning. Um, yeah, and then please do, if you have any more questions here, drop over in the chat tab, and I'm going to talk about the new set of rings here in a moment i was just checking into what's happening over here on the chat um yeah and please if you do come on to the website and chat please um please try not to solicit your stuff or um ask for donations which i know somebody on here is and appreciate if you um find another platform for that thank you all right so let's see christine you mentioned last week if i added the divine i am ring to my practitioner set it would be the same as having the six rings together i have a 29 inch harmonizer ring and uh let's see 29 inch harmonizer ring I was wondering if it would be beneficial to use them for the cosmic blending so Yes, when you so basically with the new alchemist set and working with the practitioner set, any of the rings that you bring in from the alchemist set is going to boost the entire field because they all three rings will harmonize together um, and they do become, you know, greater than just their sum. They, they create something greater. And so when you bring any of the three rings from the alchemist set into the practitioner rings it's going to totally shift the energetics of those rings um, and you know really in the three new rings of the alchemist set they're all they're all carrying a similar field and working together with each other because i mean the chalice energy you know the chalice ring the chalice energy is in 
all of the rings basically. Um, pardon me here, I need to pull up a photo so I can remember which one is which on these. Yeah, actually um, these on the newer sets, the largest one is the chalice. And then the center is the harm, uh, the middle is the harmonizer and the smallest is the divine I am. But um, so yeah, if you bring any one of these three frequencies and it can be this size of ring too, in with your practitioner set, it's going to shift them. Um, and you know, in Christine too, you can also use this set of three rings, the smaller set, the personal set of the alchemist set with your practitioner set and it will shift it as well. Um, so, and I wish I could give you a little bit more details on what exactly each of those rings is doing with that set, but I really don't know and I'm not really seeing the best this morning to take it, take too deep of a look. Um, but yeah, as far as that harmonizer ring and do that cosmic blending, yeah, totally. The, when you use that harmonizer ring with any of the other tools it is going to help integrate it more into the physical because that's just what that harmonizer ring is doing is it is bringing it and blending it integrating it more into the physical world uh, let's see susan my wi-fi modem has two antennas do i need to put a wi-fi ring on each antenna or just the modem itself um and susan i've worked with that too and you know, just putting the Wi-Fi ring on top of or underneath of the modem is just perfect because basically, and you can put it on the antenna as well because basically it's kind of like um, working with radionics machines where you put that ring with your piece of equipment, with your electronic equipment. It doesn't necessarily matter exactly where on the piece of equipment it goes because no matter what, it is going to be working with that entire field. And so as it comes in, the Wi-Fi ring comes in into the field of that Wi-Fi router, it's going to be working anywhere within that router. So um, you can use just a single ring and put it anywhere on there. All right. So here we go about the, um, about the new rings. Okay. Super, super excited about these. Um, they're flipping powerful. This is the new Alchemist set, the, the, the personal set. Um, you know, they're they're semi semi heavy. They're same. Um, they're the same gauge and twist as the nine inch harmonizer ring, and as well as the larger Alchemist rings, the, the practitioner Alchemist rings. So, I mean, they're a semi heavy gauge ring. They're they're heavier than the water rings. Um, I really like wearing the Divine I Am on each wrist. Um, gosh. They, uh, they're pretty phenomenal just by holding them in the hand. Uh, I was really sitting and connecting with these last night and letting them do a lot of work. It's amazing what they're doing just when you um, allow, when you allow them, when you put your attention onto them. And, you know, because I don't notice when I'm wearing my rings all day, but when I put my attention onto them and I just, you know, take that breath and I just surrender and allow for whatever is going to come through, then holy smokes, they get to be intense. Um, so, you know, wearing the tools all day is going to be doing great things. But when you put your attention there, you step back and you allow the tools to do the work. It's pretty amazing. Um, another fun thing to do with these, um, with this alchemist rings is using two of them together. Now I really like using two divine I am's together, but you can use any sizes of these together. Now this is the two divine I am's, but it's like um, when you are conscious and aware of the energy of these and you're watching and it creates this field. I mean, this field just circulates throughout your body. It's pretty amazing. And then you can start, and I was playing with it last night, and once you get this field rule and you can shift it and so like let's say i just aim it you know right at you guys um intending through the camera going to each of you and it's it's a pretty powerful potent energy of this divine i am um so there's something with creating those field creating that initial field and directing that energy 
because last night it was just it was just natural for directing energy with these i mean it just it just flowed um and again you can experiment with you know the different rings in this trio but this trio i mean they nest together so well they're they actually we've had to do a little bit of tweaking this set is 120 for the set and we were hoping to get it down to like a hundred bucks but they take a little bit of time to make one because of their heavy gauge and two to get them to nest perfect we have to um it's a delicate procedure on the hammering with the cones to get these to all nest beautifully and perfectly like they do and um and these are all cubic measures that that we use and without the templates that they traditionally have been used with and we bring in the templates of the divine i am the harmonizer and the chalice and again it doesn't matter the order that they're in as long as they are together or, or if they are you know in a vesca pisces or however you put them together they are synergizing and creating that sum that is there yeah that the sum that's greater than the whole if i said that right <laughs> so they're creating something greater than what just the three rings are um this you know the alchemist set it's it's soul alchemy i mean it is um it's clearing releasing it's working really well on the body and that's the thing too is last night um i was doing some work with the throat it's just where i was guided to work at and i sat the rings right here on my throat for maybe a minute for 10 minutes i could just still feel it there and it was doing the work for 10 minutes after i had the rings on there so it was it, it was really cool i i really enjoyed the set um have you tr tried the alchemist set under a water jar actually i've been using the alchemist set with my teas um i i love how the chalice ring works with water um to me the chalice energy and water is so phenomenal i mean it it just to me it shifts water um i have not actually sat and looked at this no christine and working with water and i haven't had brenda look at it and i haven't really played with it much just been using it here the past few days with you know with some of my beverages but um would be very curious to see what this set is doing with water but i know it works great with water because of that chalice ring that's in here uh bill are the elementals based on the cubit links so the elementals that we create, um, the Hedica, the Hedica is one that we almost always put into a cubit measure, though working with like when you're creating a Hedica, it does not have to be cut to a sacred measurement because basically you are working with the consciousness of the water, you're working with the spirit. So it's, it's kind of like a symbol. It is a... Um, it is, it is just a physical symbol for you to interact with the consciousness and the physical and the energetics of water. Um, so it is simply just that symbol. And what empowers this is Hedica, water. So that is what is actually empowering the symbol to do the changes that we see taking place on water, soil, person. It, it is actually just the energetics of Hedica. Now, when you add in a sacred measurement, then you're adding in just another layer to everything. So I believe we're still using the, the STU, the standard TO2 Econ unit, in the creation of the Hedicas, um, just because that STU has always been a, a great one for working with the elementals. Um, I could be wrong. We might switch that to the Golden Fire, not not positive on that i just have a measuring rod and cut all my headache measurements to that length um, now the other cubits 
we have over the years played with it and have put some of the other qubits in or the other sorry elementals into a qubit measure but currently no it's only the hetica that we are cutting the sacred measures for for the elementals and the elementals themselves are you know they don't they're fine with just being just the elemental because it's it's them that is coming through the symbol but I do like to add it to the water elemental because it just brings through another layer to it all. All right. Oh, cool. And Randy's put a post here, um, a link to the alchemist rings. So we sell, we have two different pages on there. One is the alchemist rings where you can just get the rings separate by themselves of all sizes. And then there's a page with the alchemist set. And so we have the two different sets there. We have this personal set, and then we have the, the larger practitioner set. And I'm pretty sure we're going to come out with a um, home set, kind of like what we did with the Harmonic Creation Field Trio, where we had the home set, which is this set right here of the Harmonic Creation Field Trio. So uh, this new trio of rings, since we already have the nine inch harmonizer ring, that's kind of what we're intending to do is to create the alchemist set in that um, nine, eight and seven inch approximately sizes here at some point in time. Um, that's gonna be another couple weeks here. But I tell you the new set of alchemist rings are, they're, they're pretty powerful, they really are. And, um, you know, I was using them last night too for everything that I would do with the Divine I Am Taurus. It's like these were holding that space as well. Um, you know, so there, it is a really a powerful set of rings. And I look forward to a lot of you who are very, um, observant and can see on so many different levels and layers on what's going on energetically and with yourself and i really look forward on to receiving some feedback on these rings just because i you know i have a feeling that these are going to be a pretty popular set because they're pretty flipping phenomenal um, lois would it be beneficial to add one of the practitioner set rings to the alchemist ring set um, you know, yes, you can totally add any of the other rings to the alchemist set and it's just going to bring in another layer to it all. Um, and you very much, you very well could find that there's a specific ring that just works wonderfully with these, that it's just, it's the ring. Um, know for for you that brings through that extra added energetics so that's it with any of these tools is to play with them and synergize with the other tools that you have whether they're twisted sage tools or crystals or frequency emitters whatever it is and just be guided to play and see what you find because you might find that very specific frequency and feel that you really need that you've been looking for so anyway bryson sold i know i you know i'm really am trying to push these rings because they're they're pretty flipping phenomenal um and and they're just you know they're they're a next step um you know as i've seen them as all right, you guys, I see we're done with questions and I have no more on the internet. Um, apologies, it's just kind of one of those strange days today. I feel a little bit off, which, you know, I know we're all used to feeling a little bit off these days, this past year or two. And it's all good. It's just part of part of the process. It really is. And um, I guess for me, what I am learning throughout my process is just try to stay present and here and to breathe. And um, for me, that is huge. Uh, if I can just stay present in this here now moment and just breathe. I know that I, for the past few days, um, 
that I've been in this next transition. It's been, um, I've been trying to not focus on work as much and to try to focus on self care and playing with a daughter and, you know, and just living a little bit. Um, and that has certainly helped smooth out the flow of life. So yeah, anyway, um, yeah, if you guys, are on the ride just keep breathing and keeping the here now and know it is all perfect and wonderful and nothing is ever permanent that's for sure so everything we're going through it's it's all a temporary shift um so thank you guys very much thank you all for being here and for the support through the years and we really appreciate that um i was just trying to think if there was anything else um out in Allegan, Michigan. We're going to be doing the Mary Hardy event here in a couple of weeks, which is um, the uh, the Temple of Sakar. It's uh, Mary Hardy. She's the one who does the Templars and Marys and the Holy Grail Vortex. Um, she has a pretty, pretty cool new video out. Um, but anyway, if anybody is out in that direction, Michigan, and you're interested in Mary Hardy and her stuff, um, just send me an email, Twisted Sage at Hotmail. Um, it's kind of a semi private event, but if you're interested in becoming a, um, a Cather or a Mary, then you can certainly, you know, come in and do that too. Um, it's just probably an event of about 150 people. And then after that, it's going to be the event in Clinton, Iowa. Um, I know it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, you know, it's between Dubuque and Davenport, but you know, Chicago is somewhat near there. They got the Mississippi river. Um, but it's going to be a one day event where we're, we're going to be doing some pretty phenomenal things. Um, I'd love to be able to figure out how to film that. Uh, let's see. We did the divine I am activation, which wasn't that good because it was in the middle of a, um, Pretty, pretty busy atmosphere, but there was that that came out um, on YouTube to the Divine I Am activation from this last um, meditation event that we went to in California. I'm um, just trying to think if there was anything else that's coming up. We will have some new things coming out. We'll have the elemental pendants coming out again soon. Uh, maybe next week we'll have elemental pendants ready. Uh, so that's going to be pretty huge. We're going to use uh, Shungite in those pendants, and I believe they're the Divine I Am ring. Um, let's see. And then what else do we have on our plates? Um, yeah, then we're, we're, we're playing with new tools every day. So, you know, we're always looking for something new and exciting to bring through. And with this Alchemist set of rings, um, you know, I think this is going to be where we're going to be at for just a little bit um, because there's so much possibilities and potentials when working with these. So I think this is going to be the energy that we're going to be sitting in for a little while will be this alchemist set. And um, then, you know, but, but with this alchemist set, we're working on, you know, creating new tools throughout. So anyway the light workers sanctuary the colony dallas oh man bryce and i really need to get down to texas i tell you i would love to come down and play there um and that's the other thing that we're working on is well we're actually today i need to get off of here and get over to the other studio because we're creating an energy spa we have all these chambers sitting over there we have the all five versions of the ascension chambers and we're going to get them all back up again, put their coverings on, get their audios for each of them, put the lights back in. And we're opening up an energy spa here in Little Buffalo Gap, South Dakota. And we have our giant copper pyramid set up over at the other studio um, outside. And so we're going to start working on making this a destination place too, but um, I'd still love to come down to Texas. Um, they have a huge ascension pyramid at that sanctuary. Really? So Fernando's saying down there, they have a huge ascension pyramid. 
well, that's phenomenal. Yeah, so that's totally what we want to start doing is setting up larger ascension pyramids, um, you know, for, for people, for sanctuaries, things like that. Um, that's just on my personal agenda is to uh, create some larger structures for people to use. So anyway, a lot going on here at the studio and a lot going on in personal world. And I know there's a lot going on in creation right now. Um, it's a beautiful thing. We're really starting to see creation energy flowing again. Um, but again, you know, it all boils down to each of us and doing our own self work so that we can step into being creators without taking our old pallet of shit with us. You know, we got to step in clean and clear into this new blank canvas that we're coming into in creation. And so it all boils down to each of us, you know, keeping up on the work, which, you know, you guys that are all here are some phenomenal people. I know a lot of you here and I know a lot of the work that you're doing. And um, thank you for doing the work for yourself and for sharing this with everybody else. So anyway, much love, you guys. I, I do appreciate you very much. And um, all right, we'll probably see you next week. All right. Take care. Have a great weekend and be sure to play a little and breathe and stay in the moment. Those are all advice to myself as well. All right. Take care.